Hello you guys. So I have another talking video for you and it's going to be a little bit of a more serious conversation. This is a conversation that I wish somebody would have had with me. And with that being said, I want to be the one to sit down and have this conversation with you. Because there will be a time where you find yourself in this position. And it's not a position that many people talk about. You know, it's not comfortable to talk about. It's not comfortable to even think about. It's not comfortable to imagine. So, what am I talking about? Well, I had a wonderful subscriber of mine named Jasmine leave me a wonderful question on my community tabs page. And it was so amazing that I knew I wanted to dedicate a video to it entirely on its own. So Jasmine, I thank you immensely for taking the time to leave that comment and also being brave enough to ask that sort of question because I know for a fact I wasn't that brave to ask that sort of question. Jasmine had asked, I recently lost my dad and since then I've been trying to unlearn and detach from his reality to progress into my own. This has had me feeling really stuck, hopeless, and lost. I always find comfort in your videos because I feel like I've finally found a voice that speaks a language I can understand. My question is, when you have the freedom to completely change your reality into one you want to live in, where do you start? I'm at the point where I have nothing but freedom and it's exciting but entirely overwhelming and I feel terrified to take the first step. All the love in the world to you. Thank you so much for being you and making a home here on your channel. So as I mentioned, I thank you so much for t leaving that, that question in that comment. So, you know, we kind of have to think about it. Our whole lives we have, you know, sometimes two, but, but normally one. We have at least somebody that is our, not just our role model, but somebody that we we're living through. It's very different moving in a life where you have parents or a guardian, you know, even if they might be in another country, but just knowing that they're still there is a completely different reality from when they're no longer there. I, in my wildest imaginations, would have never imagined that at the age of 20, I would be tasting freedom in its entirety. I had no idea, and I feel like me being unprepared for even that type of possibility set me back for many years, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to, I want to make this video is because I too was stuck, I didn't know how to make the first moves, and I was very intimidated by the freedom that was being laid out in front of me. I had never seen it before, I've never fathomed it before, nobody even hinted that that was there. You know, it's not something we ever think about. When when we're living life, we don't think about losing our parents. We don't think about losing our guardian or the one who takes care of us, the one we live with. That just never crosses our mind. So when the time comes, it's it's literally almost as though we've been placed in a foreign land. And as Jasmine had mentioned, we're welcomed to this world where we are free to do absolutely anything in the world. And now, we no longer have that person who can save us when something goes wrong, who might be able to help us when we're sick, who can be there to guide us, to tell us what to do, that has walked, been around the sun many times, right? When we no longer have that and we, as I mentioned, are introduced to this freedom, it can be scary, it can be overwhelming, it can be confusing, and it can be intimidating. So I want this video to be sort of maybe some stepping stones or just a little, a couple tips to start the navigation process through this new life that, you know, we're ultimately in charge of building now. So I really sat down and I asked myself, when you have the freedom to completely change your reality into the one where you want to live, where do you start? So I asked myself, I said, Sarah, where, where'd you start? What was your first step? So my first tip is going to be, I need you to really stop and sit with yourself. It's going to be hard, it's going to be weird, but the first step is being completely, 110% brutally honest with yourself. See where you truly find yourself today. Who have you been surrounding yourself with? How have you been spending your time? Where is your current reality? Not your fantasy, not your dream, not what you hope to have happen, you need to be truthful and you need to be honest with yourself. 
You can't leave anything out. And most importantly, you cannot lie to yourself. How have we been spending our time? What have we been doing? Because when we, when we understand that the freedom is in the palm of our hands, we have to be honest with what the picture currently is. The reason why I wanted to sit down with myself and ask me these things is because I needed to make sure that I was completely confident and okay with the position I found myself in then and there. How can I work towards fixing something or introducing myself to freedom if I don't fully understand the shoes I'm currently walking in? And I'll be honest, while my father was sick, I masked a lot of my emotions. I pretended I was happy when I wasn't. I pretended that I enjoyed doing stuff that I did when I didn't. I had to sit down and make sense of my current reality before I started changing it. I think that's the best way I can put it. And I needed to really see where my reality was, right? Because if I even skipped out a little bit of something, I'm still going to be carrying that with me into my next future. The reality that I'm building, the future that I'm bringing. If we don't sit down and make sure that we understand what is with us, if we don't understand what all we're carrying, what all we've been surrounding ourselves with, with people, with emotions, with situations, with jobs, with anything, if we don't see what luggage we've been carrying, there's no way for us to drop some of the baggage. And I promise you, when we walk into this new life that is filled with freedom, we want as minimal baggage as possible, as physically possible. And I'll go, I'm going to explain a little bit later on why I'm emphasizing that. We need as minimal luggage as possible when entering into this new reality. I wasn't prepared for the things that I was going to be left with after he had passed away. We can't just walk away and start new and act like nothing just happened. In a way, for a moment, we need to place ourselves in their shoes because we're taking a lot of responsibility just being in the position that we're in. For example, your housing situation. Are you being left with a home? Do you have to take care of a home? Do you have a mortgage? Are you living in an apartment and your, your family still has a family home, you know? So these are things that we need to be mature and not just let sit on the back burner. There's finances, there's bills, there's, there's cars, there's insurance, there's health insurance, there's all of these things that we can't walk away from just because we're free, if that makes sense. So with me, for example, I was blinded to the idea and the fact that my dad had been paying my car insurance. We were on a phone bill together. I didn't even know some of the bills that we had. He was paying for dental, for health, for all of these bills, for my security while he was alive. Now that he's not here anymore, some of my security is going to be gone. It's going to be dropped. And, and understanding that is going to set us up for success. I had to take on that responsibility before I started building my new reality that I wanted to experience. And another thing is, is I had honestly expected some of my other family members to help me with some of this stuff. It's a very big and vast world out there. We have to close our old reality first. We have to take responsibility and make sure it will be an easy transition for us. Even if it's just wiping the, the slate clean, canceling all insurance, canceling all of that, and starting over and having everything in your name. I was never warned about this, you know? I just thought I was free to go live. I could go on a boat and just fly away, you know, if I wanted to. But that's not reality. And a lot of people don't prepare us for this reality. And sometimes we're sheltered from this reality for our whole life. We can't just walk away and start new. That, that was something that I thought that I could do. I'm not saying that this is going to happen for everybody. We almost have to role play and place ourselves in their shoes just for a small moment until we handle what we need to handle and everything is covered. My next huge bit of advice, do not numb these new foreign emotions and gain new bad habits. It's a big world out there, you guys. We got to make sure that we stay away from drugs and alcohol and these addictive lifestyles because it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be a walk in the park. It's going to be very scary, as I mentioned. It's, it's confusing and it's intimidating. We can't numb these feelings hoping that that will make it easier for us, that it'll make it easiest for us to navigate because we're not as stressed or we're not as anxious. And this can even be in terms of completely medicating ourselves and not just referring to like street drugs and recreational, that type of stuff. Our spirit is experiencing these emotions and these, are, these emotions are going to help us evolve as beings. 
if we numb ourselves and don't allow ourselves to truly feel these scary emotions, we're not going to progress the way that we need to. It's like putting an iron chain on our ankle. We're not going to go anywhere no matter how far we feel like we're going. I need, I, I need you guys to understand this. Losing a loved one is extremely painful. Building a new reality is very hard and intimidating, but we cannot mask these emotions. No matter what we're feeling, it doesn't matter. We need to experience those emotions. And I know some of you guys might be like, Sarah, but I would like, I would never. We all think that we would never do something. But one, I will tell you guys one thing, the adult life is what you see in high school times a million. You think kids smoke and do drugs and drink and do all that crazy stuff in high school? I was not even prepared for the type of life you will see outside your closed doors, especially in the adult world. I was shocked. I still am to this day shocked. We can even talk about that in a whole nother video, but I just need, I need you to hear from me. Please, please, please stay strong, stay determined. Do not numb these emotions. They might be scary. Our, our friend circle or the people who are around us, they might not even know how to comprehend the emotions that we're feeling. So we might feel stuck, alone, like nobody understands us. That's okay. Not everybody needs to understand us and we don't need to understand them. We don't need to spend our whole life trying to get them to understand us. Please do not numb yourself. Please try your best to not gain any new bad habits while you are exploring and learning about the freedom of not just reality but building your own reality. I wish I would have been warned of that. My next biggest tip is you need a plan A, B, C, and D. You always need a backup plan. That can be with anything, with finances, with your job, with your housing situation, okay? Anything. We need to have a backup plan. I didn't have a plan A or B or C. I thought my life was having parents and that was that. Even after losing my mom, I never resorted to making a backup plan in case my dad passed away, even though I had the thought cross my mind before. I promise you, I thought to myself, I wonder what would happen. Hmm, it's never gonna happen, so I don't need to worry about it. It will happen. One day, if it's not today, we're not immortal, our souls might be, but one day we are all going to be faced with this reality of the freedom outside of our parents, outside of our guardian, outside of our family. And some of us may never, you know, some of us might have a very, very, very strong and supportive family system. That was also not a part of my plan B, you know? I thought that I was going to have like a village around me, right? I wasn't prepared. So it doesn't matter what, what the subject may be, always have a backup plan. Say you're in school right now. Like I used to be in school, I was in college. This, this, this could be a great example, perfect example. After my mom passed away, right, I didn't have a plan A, B, C, or D for anything. I didn't have a plan for if my dad passed away. I didn't have a plan for if I had to stop going to school. I didn't have a plan if I had to stop playing sports. Sometimes life will happen, and it won't be to our, to our advantage. <laughs> so I wasn't prepared for, one, losing my father, losing my mother. I wasn't prepared for having a brain injury. I wasn't prepared for not being able to finish school. I didn't have a backup plan and that made me even more scared in this vast freedom I have. Having a plan and a routine and a structure is going to, it's going to save us in the long run, okay? And if that structure falls and we don't have something to rely on, we're gonna, we're, you know, of course we're gonna feel lost and confused. And it's gonna be even more hard because when we go try to ask somebody for help, they won't even understand because they're not even in the same predicament as we are. We need to make sure that we have a backup plan because even though the worst has already happened and we think that the worst can never happen, we never know. So we have to still stay on our 10 toes. We can't be just comfortable, fall into this, this comfy cozy chair of, oh, okay, I've got my life to live. I could go live on a beach. I'll go find a sugar daddy. No. <laughs> Okay, we gotta make sure we always have a backup plan. Always have a backup plan. And why I keep saying this so much is because a lot of the time, mom and dad are our backup plan. If something doesn't happen, we call mom. If we're in trouble, we call dad. If mom's mad at us, we call dad. If dad's mad at us, we call mom. You know, I always had my mom as my backup plan. That was my only backup plan. It was my Lord and Savior. So we, we just have to always make sure that we we know, we know what's going on and we know what will go on if what's going on can no longer go on. <laughs> this next one is very important and sort of what I was referring to when I said we need to be honest with who we're surrounding ourselves with. Not everyone is going to understand. 
Not everyone is going to understand you or your life choices. This is so huge. I am still having to drill into my head that I am having to live a reality that not everybody else is living. We're still young. There's some 15, 60 year olds out there who still have their parents. And when they see us acting or behaving or even thinking a certain way, like I said, even in their wildest imagination, they wouldn't be able to understand. So this means that we can't have high expectations for anybody, you guys. And I mean that, and I'm, and I'm being brutally honest with you. Your best friend, your boyfriend or girlfriend, they're not going to understand. If you all of a sudden stop doing something, you, you, you decide that you need to stop talking to somebody, they might not understand and that's okay. It's not that that doesn't matter, but what matters more is that you understand that in order for you to keep progressing, you can't carry that baggage with you. For example, I knew for a fact that after my dad passed away, I, I could not continue hanging around the people that I was hanging around. I didn't care how happy they made me. I didn't care how much they loved and appreciated me. I had to be honest with myself. And this has nothing to do with saying that you are on a higher pedestal than everybody else because you've experienced pain and the loss of a parent, right? That's not what this means. But if you keep trying to force yourself to fit into a friend group that you just no longer can fit into, you're gonna cause yourself more havoc and pain than if you were to just just take a deep breath and like I said, really sit and be honest with yourself and just say, you know what? I gotta go my own way. I gotta go my own way. They're, they're, they're still here in this reality, but I am literally having to step outside that reality and become somebody new. Not everybody's gonna get you, your life choices, what you choose to do, and that is okay. You have to have confidence in yourself, in your choices, in your actions, in the consequences of your actions, in everything. I truly think it is very important for us to gain the a realistic awareness of where we are before we start building our reality. Awareness of this is awareness of what is going to be lost once we take that first step. This is support. This is motivation. This is discipline. An ear to listen to. Even though my dad was not a talkative person, I would talk his ear off about every conspiracy I heard. The first few months after he passed away, I found, my, I found myself walking around sad because I, nobody had sat me down and, and, and told me what to expect. What I was going to lose alongside my parents. What I was going to lose in my new reality that I once had. As I had mentioned, support, motivation, discipline. The only reason I was disciplined was because of my parents. The only reason I kept my head on my shoulders was because of my parents. The only reason why I acted right in public was because of my parents. I didn't want to embarrass them. I didn't want to disappoint them. I didn't want to ever call them from a, a holding cell one day. It was because of them. I was inspired to just be alive because of them. We lose that when we lose them. Yes, we can try to pretend. I try all the time to pretend. I still try to imagine that I've got the support of my parents, but it's different. It's different when you have it on the astral plane than when you have it on the physical plane. And nobody talks about what we lose alongside with our parents. And the reason why I'm making this such a point is because I was never warned about this. Even when I entered into the freedom, I wasn't ready to then go explore in that freedom. Once I started taking my first, second, and third step, actually embracing the freedom, I wasn't warned that I would be reminded I have no more support. I don't have outside motivation. I don't have somebody looking at me, making sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Once we gain awareness of the things we have lost, the characteristics, the qualities, we need to understand that it's our job to not only adopt these characteristics, but advance them. My mother was an amazing listener. She was very, very, very motivational. She was extremely supportive. She was courageous, creative. She helped me be all of these things. Now it's my job to adopt those characteristics. Now I'm the one who creates my own motivation. I'm the one who creates my discipline. And I've never had to do that before. We've never had to actually take the front seat. And what's even more crazy is when, like Jasmine was saying, when we sit and realize that we've been 
building our reality based around our parents. The reality we grew up in isn't the real reality. It's like we're shedding all of these layers off of us. Once we're able to adopt some of the characteristics that were around us, that helped build who we are, build our character, once we adopt that, we will carry those characteristics within us and project them onto others. When we have children, when we have a, when we have a friend who is hurt or lost, when we see that somebody needs to be told, hey, pick your chin up, you've got this, let's go, come on, you've got this, you know, we can become the cheerleader for our own life. We used to have mom, mom and dad shaking the pom-poms. Yeah, go, you got us, Sarah. And we needed that for the time being. But we don't need that forever. And that's the magic in this freedom. And something that is still important is to understand that we still need mature and experienced teachers. I remember when my dad first passed away, I would be damned to trust anything that came out of anybody else's mouth. I put up this force field that I didn't know I would have. And this is another thing that we have to be aware of when we are taking our first steps because I feel like I personally closed myself off to a lot of people, whether it even just be motivational speakers of, of that nature. I feel like I closed myself off to certain resources that otherwise would have really helped me, even if it was reaching out to somebody who was a little bit older than me, somebody else who had also lost a loved one. We can't put our guard up because there are still so many valuable teachers out there who are waiting to teach us. So this kind of even ties into stop and ask yourself who you're surrounding yourself with. Do you have any mature and experienced people around you? Or do you need that to be one of the quests you find? Not that that's like a job, but would it be cool to find a motivational speaker that you find that you find really teaches you what you need to be taught? There's so many amazing books out there, you guys. I've been reading a lot of interesting books, and some of them are teaching me things that my parents would have never even been able to teach me. But if I would have still had that guard up and thought that either I knew it all or that what I was left with was fine, you know, I would be closing so many doors and my reality and the freedom that I would be exposing myself to wouldn't be the innate reality that's actually out there, you know? It would just be kind of like a mask diversion and we don't want that. This is the time to be smart. I heard a quote that stuck with me entirely and I wanted to make a video about it all on its own but I feel like this video is, is what I mean, is, is the sustenance I was looking for to, <laughs> to help with this. So I heard this quote that says, we are born looking like our parents, we die looking like our decisions. If I were to have heard that and my parents still be alive, that wouldn't hit home. It wouldn't be that life shocking to me, you know? But me understanding now that I'm going to die looking like my decisions is probably one of the best the best things to kick me in the booty to get me to do what I need to do, to be smart, to be wise, to have that drive and determination to make me proud, to want to make myself proud. That is so important. So we have to be smart. We have to really be careful with the decisions we're making. We don't have that person on speed dial anymore. In embracing the freedom, we have to still know that they're always with us and that their love is still deep within us. My, my little bit of advice that I would say to help step away from the reality that we once knew as our parents and the one that we were once building, to go out and explore, go out and adventure, travel somewhere new, walk a path you've never walked, go to, go to national parks, see the Grand Canyon, go to Dead Horse Point, count the stars, Teach yourself new hobbies. This universe is seriously at the palm of your hands, you know? And it is scary. I still haven't made my first run yet, you know? And I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't want this video to be a this is what you have to do in order to make your first steps, but just some bits of advice. I can't be out here acting like I am just this perfect, determined, I am capable of conquering my own life. As you guys can probably see, I'm still working on that. I'm still trying to build my reality. I'm still learning to embrace this freedom. It is intimidating. That intimidation factor never goes away and it's been years. And that's kind of something I think that we should look forward to. That's magical, right? 
We need to be courageous to be able to just step out into the world and see what we can do. What are we really capable of doing? Most importantly, I want you guys to know that you are not alone. It's not something that needs to be figured out even a week from now, five weeks from now, five years from now, ten years from now. It's not something that we have to have figured out before we go and explore. But these things, these little bits and pieces that of advice that I gave you, I truly believe are going to be at least a, a starting ground. Little bits of advice that you can stick into your pockets and be ready and say, look, you know what? I've got what I need into my pockets. I'm going to take my first step. And then I'm going to take my next step. And then it's going to keep going and going and going. But understanding that we have to be honest with ourselves. We need to see the reality we're stepping away from for what it truly is, or that reality is just gonna follow us into the next. We're gonna wonder why we're trying to build something, but something keeps poking us and tapping us on the back, reminding of us of our past, of the pain, of the turbulence. That is always gonna be there. But us knowing that we have the ability to keep our vision focused and go on the path that we want to, and if somebody is to come in or we realize that somebody along the way isn't, isn't, isn't it, even if it's a friend, even if you just need to lose contact with somebody, it's okay. This is your life journey. You're only going to experience it once in this body. We need to be honest with ourselves. We can't just walk away and start over. We cannot numb these foreign, these foreign and just strange feelings, which will ultimately lead in creating new bad habits. Okay? We don't want to do that. We don't want to backpedal. Okay? We need to have a plan A, B, and C before we even step foot into the crazy world, all right? Because we never know what's going to happen. We never know what's around the next corner. You need to understand that not everybody is going to get it, and that is perfectly okay. It's not their job to get it, and it's not yours to get them to understand, okay? And, just, and don't be scared to take that first step, to go out and explore. Because guess what? You've done what you've needed to do to prepare yourself. You've gained more awareness of what is to come and what's not to be expected. We've sifted through our circle of who we want to be around, who we want to bring and introduce into our new reality. And most importantly, think about it. You are entering into a field of freedom that not everybody else is. Some people might find that inspiring. Somebody might want to tag along and enjoy the ride too. This is your ride. This is your experience. As I mentioned, do not, do not allow anybody to piggyback off of your freedom and your ability to create your own reality. Somebody might not like that. It might be a spouse. It might be a friend. It might be a family member. They might try to keep you chained to your old reality because they don't want you to change. They don't understand your change. We got to be ready for this type of stuff. As I had just mentioned, I... I'm personally still trying to learn how to navigate through this freedom. Every day I'm learning something new and, you know, every day I hope I'm closer to my next big jump, my next big step. We don't have to rush anything. Time is of the complete essence. We have all the time in the world. What matters is how we choose to spend that time. And we have to make sure that we are the ones building our own reality. Because as I had mentioned, we don't have mom and dad to call anymore. And some of us might want that. We might want somebody who's going to be telling us what to do. We might want somebody who might be a little bit overprotective because our parents were. That is not what this is about. This, that, is, that is one of the biggest ways to stop our ability to create our own reality and explore that freedom. Because as I mentioned, if we surround ourselves with the, wrong, with the wrong people, they will completely filter out that freedom from us and it'll be as though it's not even there. I really hope that this video was at least a starting ground. Some of us might not have even thought about this topic before, you know? And I, as I was asked this question, I myself have never really even thought about that. I just almost embraced it and started walking into the, the fog. I didn't clear my reality first. I didn't make it crystal clear. I just walked in. I didn't have somebody to hold me by the shoulders and say, wait, not yet. There's a couple things we need to do before we take our first step. And that's what I want to do for you. I want to be the one to say, just hold on, let's slow down. Not that anybody's rushing, because some of us don't even know what the heck to do. But we might be eager to 
make that first step. We might want to go explore that freedom, but we need, but we need to take a deep breath. We need to get a journal. We need to be honest with ourselves. We got to make sure that we are solid with ourselves before we enter the labyrinth. It's wild out there. And there's kind of a reason why our parents never prepared us for it. I think they were too scared to accept the fact that we might find ourselves there one day. I never expected to find myself there, and I'm sure none of us do. So I just wanted to make this video to say that there are a couple things that we need to take into mind before we really, really embrace that freedom. So yes, and if, if you haven't lost a loved one, or say maybe your parent is sick, um, maybe your guardian is sick, or maybe you just feel like you're losing contact, maybe the relationship might be slipping. I hope, I really hope that this video offered some sort of guidance as to maybe what step you could take next. I want to thank you guys again for being a part of my life because without you, I wouldn't have even dove into this notion myself. You know, after being asked that by Jasmine, I'm even like questioning myself and my reality and I even asked myself, have you even started building your own reality or are you still thinking that the reality you're building is the one to impress your parents, if that makes sense? Am I still operating outside of my dad's reality? Have I even embraced the freedom that's out there? I had to ask myself these questions and so, yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys. I, I look forward to our next video and I have a million topics under the sun I want to talk about so I hope you don't get sick of me. But, uh, yeah, I will see you guys later. I'm going to go upload this. Bye.